I am grateful for my family. <laughs> I'm grateful for food. I'm grateful that I've been able to call friends and I'm grateful for my family because uh, mainly my parents because they've helped me understand what this is all about and what lockdown is about. Mm. Yeah, we're just really grateful to God at this time that he's kept us safe and um, that we've had provision for food. Um, <laughs> and um, it's just been a great opportunity to get to know our neighbours and people that live close by at a time that we wouldn't normally have had. And yeah, and I'm just very, very grateful for um, God that he's protected us and provided for us and he's he's just got his massive arms and he's just kind of held us real tight in this time of uh, potential lots of anxiety and lots of worry and yet he's kind of given us his peace. Thank you very much, God. Hi church family, it's great to see you uh, this morning. Thanks to the Beechams for their I'm Grateful video. If you'd like to send in a I'm Grateful video, please feel free to record one. It needs to be one minute long and you can send it into the church office. We'd love to continue just to keep uh, receiving these encouragements from around the church family. If this is your first time joining us, then I'd love to encourage you to hit the link that's in the description below this video and fill in your details so that we can keep you posted on everything that's happening here at Kingsgate. Um, I'm going to hand over to Adele and Simon in just a few moments to lead us as we worship Jesus together. But I want to encourage you this morning with some words from Psalm 121. The psalmist writes this, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? I just want you to stop for a moment and try and picture the image. Imagine that you're stood before a mountain range. You're looking at the mountain range. The psalmist is looking at something that is, um, that is kind of irremovable. And he's looking at it and he's asking the question, is that where my help comes from? And then on the very uh, tip of the mountains in, in the land of Israel at the time, that was the place where uh, exotic worship took place, where worship of other gods were taking place. And the psalmist is saying, is this where my help comes from? Does my help come from exotic spiritual experiences? And then the psalmist continues and he says, no, 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 no. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Friends, nothing's changed. In a world where lots of things have been turned on their head, in a world where things that seemed irremovable, like mountain tops, and in a world where things seemed as uh, tantalizing as ex exotic spiritual experiences, today I want to encourage you to lift your eyes up and worship the King who is above them all. I want to encourage you as you're sat in your lounge, why don't you lift your hands and worship Jesus as Adele and Simon leads us in worship. You may even want to get up and stand up and raise your hands and worship Jesus as we sing together. So let me now hand over to Adele and Simon.
is part of his very nature. Um, and that love comes from God and the character of God is rooted in love. And then I just sort of also sense this from Romans 8, which I'm just going to read, read to you. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So I just want to just concentrate on those words as we sing the next song, which is one thing remains, because his love never fails. He is love. It will never fail. We can be absolutely rock solid and sure, resting in the love that God has for us. His love never fails and never gives up. It never runs out on me. Oh, your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Never runs out. 
pray together, shall we? Father God, thank you for that wonderful song that speaks of the greatness of your love. Thank you that in a world that is constantly offering us alternatives to your love, that, Lord, when we focus our eyes back on your love, love that took Jesus to the cross, we're just reminded of its extravagance. We're uh, reminded of its wonder. We're reminded that nothing in this world compares to the love that is found in Christ and Christ alone. And right now, wherever we are, we want to just declare your goodness, your mercy. We want to pour out praise to you and thank you for your great love to us. Amen. I'd just like us to pray for a few moments together about something really important. Uh, I mentioned in my video on Tuesday that we're coming into a new season as a church and I think one of the challenges that we face is that we, we've in many ways come through uh, a season where we've had to really kind of dig deep and uh, make sure that we're doing things well together as a church. And I, I, one of the things I would suggest is that we're probably coming into a season where there's the danger that we could experience fatigue and frustration. Fatigue in the sense of, wow, this is hard work. Uh, and frustration in the sense of, I wish things could be back to normal, and I wish they could be back to normal now. And I'd love us to pray about this because... I, I, you know, looking at all of the guidance that's coming in from the government and the restrictions that are just being put in place, I think we're going to be walking like this together as a church family for some weeks to come. And so I'd love us to pray together. And in Galatians, um, Paul writing to a church just like ours, he says this, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. And so I'd love us to pray. I'd love us to pray that our hearts wouldn't grow weary. I'd love us to pray that we wouldn't give up. And most importantly, I'd love you to really grab hold of verse 10, where it says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those of the household of faith. And I want you to remember Dan's video from last week where he was encouraging us to pick up the phone and make one phone call a week. That's one way that we can do good to the family of God. So shall we pray together now? Father God, we come to you in these unusual days, in days where the levels of frustration are increasing and the le levels of fatigue are increasing. And rather than relying upon our own strength, we want to lean into you now. And we want to pray that you would help us to not grow weary. We want to pray that you would give us strength beyond ourselves, that we might continue to be the people of God, loving one another, loving the church family, taking care of of one another. And so, Lord, we pray in these days, would you help us to be people who don't respond to circumstances from a position of frustration and fatigue, but rather with fresh energy that comes from your Spirit, that we might be people that do good to all people, but especially to those who belong to the household of God. Lord, we pray in these days let the church arise and be seen for what it is, the family of God, loving one another because we, are, we have been first loved by you. We pray, take hold of us when we physically can't meet together and let us love in every way possible in these days. We pray in the name of Jesus. Let me hand back now to Adele. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will 
have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness. to us this morning. i just got a couple of things to say. The first is, this has been quite a uh, whirlwind week for us here as a church. We've had not one, but two weddings at Kingsgate. And so on Thursday, Steve and Ali got married, and then yesterday, Adam and Rael got married. So where you are, why don't you give them a big cheer? It's wonderful to be part of a church family where we get to celebrate with people as they make huge, big life decisions as God takes two individual peoples and puts them together in this new family. Um, Just a couple of notices for you. Uh, Now is the time we're going to be taking up our offering. Uh, You can give to Kingsgate really simply through texting. Uh, What you need to do is you need to text 07380307. 800, and then you need to put the words Kingsgate in capital letters and then give and the pound sign. And if you send that, you'll get a link back and you can fill in all of the details. You can make a one off gift or a regular gift. And again, just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who, over the last few months, has been giving really sacrificially to us as a church. So thank you for the way that you've been giving. On Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, that's the 15th. The coffee shop is going to be reopening here down at the King Centre. This is really exciting news. Richard and the team have been working hard on making the coffee shop COVID secure. And so we really want to invite you to come and 
use the coffee shop to uh, enjoy uh, coffee, cake, you know Richard sized portions, they come in mammoth sized portions, so we want you to come and enjoy that, that's from uh, Monday to Thursday, 9 till 2pm over this coming season, and uh, in addition to that, starting on the first Thursday in October, the table meal will also be relaunching, more details to follow on that. Uh, this evening at 7.30 on Zoom, we have our monthly prayer and worship gathering. We'd love you to join us to pray at this really crucial time as a church. Uh, an email will be going out this afternoon with details of that, so you can just click the link, or you can scribble down now the codes that are appearing on the screen, and you'll be able to join that call. We'd love you to be part of this time as we pray and seek God together. The final thing to say before Dan comes and speaks is that starting on the 11th of October, we have a new communion service that will be taking place. This is going to be monthly on the second Sunday of each month. It's going to be at 7.30 in the evening. There are limited spaces, so you do need to book in. If you turn up and the seats are full, you won't be able to join because we do need to do things in a COVID-secure way. So please book you can book on Church Suite or you can phone the church office or email the church office and we'll get you booked in for that communion service. Without any further ado, I'm now going to hand over to Dan as he uh, preaches to us this morning.